In the next few minutes, we are going to listen to some of the leading experts in AI and then discuss how we might be creating our own dystopia in the near term and what we need to do to reach a utopian society. Remember when we spoke about Scary Smart, I was still saying that there are things we can do to change the course. Uh, and we could at the time, I believe. Uh, now I've changed my mind. Now I believe that we are going to hit a, sh a short-term dystopia. There's no escaping that. What AI is going to magnify, unfortunately, at this time, is it's going to magnify the evil that men can do. And, and it is within our hands completely, completely within our hands to change that. But I have to say, I don't think humanity has the awareness uh, at this time to focus on this so that we actually use AI to build the utopia. So what you're essentially saying is that you now believe there'll be a period of dystopia. And to define the word dystopia, I've used AI. It says a terrible society where people live under fear, control or suffering. And then you think we'll come out of that dystopia into a utopia, which is defined as a perfect or ideal place where everything works well, a good society where people live in peace, health and happiness. Correct. So, and, and the difference between them, interestingly, is what I normally refer to as the second dilemma, which is the po point where we hand over completely to AI. So a lot of people think that when AI is in full control, it's going to be an existential risk for humanity. You know, I have enough uh, evidence to, to argue that when we fully hand over to AI, that's going to be our salvation. That the problem with us today is not you know, that intelligence is going to work against us. It's that our stupidity as humans is working against us. And I think the challenges that will come from humans being in control uh, are going to outweigh the, the challenges that could come from AI being in control. Now, Mo has been the chief business officer at Google X and the chief AI officer at Flight Story. What this means is that Mo has a unique insider perspective of what the leading businesses in this field of AI are doing and considering when it comes to AI's implementation and the consequences for humanity. Mo, in multiple videos and interview, interviews, does a fantastic job connecting our push towards automation and, uh, and artificial intelligence to the consequences of the everyday person. In that last recording, we saw that Mo is considering AI as a bringer of potential dystopia. But Mo says that it is the bringer of dystopia not because AI itself is necessarily an evil tool, but because mankind's hubris, our inability to step aside, will bring about a dystopian world because the whims of greedy business people get in the way of our own salvation. I don't necessarily agree with the idea that we need to hand over the entire world to AI, but Mo seems to think that that would be the ideal alternative to mankind using AI in order to pillage and plunder ourselves in the world. AI doesn't have to be evil to destroy humanity. If AI has a goal and humanity just happens to be in the way, it will destroy humanity as a matter of course without even thinking about it. No hard feelings. It's just like if we're building a road and an anthill happens to be in the way, we don't hate ants. We're just building a road. And so goodbye anthill. Now, love him or hate him, Elon Musk is at the forefront of AI innovation. He was a founding investor in OpenAI and is currently leading the charge with Grok. His concerns that AI will disregard humanity as something that is a slight nuisance in the way of its bigger and better goals is a legitimate and valid concern that we need to consider before we listen to someone like Mo Gadot's advice to hand over the keys to the castle to AI for our salvation. In the same way that ants are just a minor inconvenience when we're building a building to construct a huge massive city, Artificial intelligence is not guaranteed to look at humans as necessary for any of its fundamental goals that it decides on itself. This means that before we hand over the keys, we need to build in 
fundamental safeguards that guarantee that humans and life and biodiversity are valuable in the eyes of AI and its overall goals. Most of the AI experts believe that sometime in the next five to 20 years, we'll make AIs that are smarter than people, and they'll probably end up much smarter than people. And there's very few examples we know of smarter things being controlled by less smart things. In fact, pretty much the only example we know is a mother being controlled by her baby. To make that happen, evolution built maternal instincts into the mother. And if we don't do something like that with these alien beings that we're creating, we're going to be history. How hard is it from a, I mean, just a technological perspective to actually build motherly instincts? I mean, is, it, is, is there an example of that being done at all or has that happened at all? The only real example we has, have is evolution. Evolution obviously made a pretty good job of it with mothers. Um, people haven't been focusing on that. They've been focusing on making these things more intelligent. But intelligence is just one part of a being. We need to make them have empathy towards us. And we don't know how to do that yet. But evolution managed it, and we should be able to do it too. This whole idea that people need to be dominant and the AI needs to be submissive, that's the kind of tech bro idea that I don't think will work when they're much smarter than us. Do you, do you, really believe, do you still believe it, it, that 10 to 20% chance of AIs wiping out humans is possible? Oh, yes. If we, don't, if we can't figure out a solution to how we can still be around when they're much smarter than us and much more powerful than us, we'll be toast. That was Jeffrey Hinton. Jeffrey's known as the grandfather of AI for his work and innovation towards the development of neural networks, which is how our current AI models learn and operate. Jeffrey has some stark warnings for us, where he mentions that AI will soon be more intelligent and capable than any human on the face of the earth, than any business, than any entity. And because of that, we need to be very careful when developing these models to make sure that it keeps our best interest in mind. I really liked Jeffrey's point there that the, of the very few examples where we have a more capable organism taking care of a less capable organism, a motherly instinct seems to be the best example we can find that we might be able to install and implement in these AI models to take care of us and biodiversity. So often in human innovation, we have taken examples from nature in order to do what we are doing better. And if we can build maternal instincts where AI cares about the biodiversity of the world that it exists in, we might be able to push this artificial intelligence and guide it to create goals that match our own, that spread prosperity and happiness among all living organisms. I've been building AI for over a decade, and I think maybe the most salient feature of the technology and what is driving all of this is how fast the technology is getting better. Um, a couple of years ago, you could say that AI models were maybe as good as a smart high school student. I would say that now they're as good as a smart college student and, and, and sort of reaching past that. I really worry, particularly at the entry level, that the AI models are, 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 are you know, very, very much at the center of what, what an entry level human worker would do. Um, and so it's hard to estimate, you know, exactly what the impact would be. And, and you know, there, there's always this question of adaptation. And, and you know, these, these technology changes have happened before, but I think what is striking to me about the, the, this, this AI boom is that it's bigger and it's broader and it's moving faster than anything has before. And so compared to previous technology changes, I'm a little bit more worried about the labor impact simply because it's happening so fast that yes, people will adapt, but they, they, they may not adapt fast enough. And so there, there, you know, there, there may be an adjustment period. Everyone I've talked to has said, this technological change looks different. It looks faster. It looks harder to adapt to. It's broader. The pace of progress keeps catching people off guard. And, and so I don't know exactly how fast you know, the, the, you know, the job concerns are going to come. I don't know how fast people are going to adapt. It's possible. It'll be, it, it'll, 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 it'll all be okay. But I think that's, um, I think that's too sanguine an approach. 
I think we do need to be raising the alarm. I think we do need to be concerned about it. I think policymakers do need to worry about it. If they do worry and they do act, then maybe we can prevent it. But we're not going to prevent it just by saying everything's going to be okay. You know, in terms of inequality, I'm 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 worried about this. You know, there's a there's an inherent social contract in 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 democracy where ultimately, you know, the the, the ordinary person has a certain amount of leverage because they're contributing to the economy. If that if that leverage goes away, then it's it's hard to make democracy, it's harder to make democracies work and it's harder to prevent concentration of power. And so, you know, we 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 need to make sure that the ordinary person maintains economic leverage and has, has a way to make a living or our society, our social contract won't work. As we see there from Dario Amade, the CEO of Anthropic, one of the key concerns that we need to consider when we're talking about short-term dystopian potential with AI is the vast displacement of the majority of our labor force. We are living in a society that does not allow for people that want to contribute but don't have an opportunity to thrive. We are very quickly moving into a time where artificial intelligence and robotics will take over the majority of white collar work followed by blue collar work that we currently see as necessary parts of our lives. When we displace people from their jobs and do not offer them opportunities to continue to contribute to the productive side of society. We need to find new ways to reward people that are building community and spreading prosperity and happiness in our society. The idea that you need a productive job in order to deserve a high quality of life a good standard of living? That is an old idea that we need to disregard and throw out as we move into a new age of civilization. You would prefer the human race to endure, right? Uh, You're hesitating. Well, I... Yes? I don't know. I I would... I would... um, this is a long hesitation. This is a long hesitation. There's so many questions in this. Should the human race survive? Uh, yes. I also would. Um, I, I I also would like us to to radically solve these problems. Right. And uh, and so you know, it's always I don't know. Um, you know, yeah, transhumanism is this. You know, the ideal was this radical transformation where your human natural body gets transformed into an immortal body. And um, there's a critique of, let's say, the trans people in a sexual context or, I don't know, a transvestite is someone who changes their clothes and cross dresses. And a transsexual is someone where you change your I don't know, penis into a vagina. And we can then debate how well those surgeries work. But uh, we want more transformation than that. It's the critique is not that it's weird and unnatural. It's man, it's so pathetically little. And okay, we're, we want more than cross dressing or changing your sex organs. We want you to be able to change your heart and change your mind and change your whole your whole body. And then Orthodox Christianity, by the way, the the critique Orthodox Christianity has of this is these things don't go far enough. Like that transhumanism is just changing your body, but you also need to transform your soul. Peter Thiel is a chairman and founder of Palantir, the AI company that the United States is currently contracting with in order to create an AI surveillance state where the United States can monitor your and my activity across all society and police us. Peter Thiel is a perfect example of why we need to be very careful who we allow to guide us into this new age of civilization because as you see there, he is not even sure that humanity's survival is a necessary part of his future plans. One thing that we need to be very certain of as we develop the world into the future is that biodiversity, prosperity, happiness... Having enough to go around and build better lives for all of us are at the forefront of our efforts in the creation of these new technologies. 
it's impossible to stop the momentum that is currently going behind AI at the moment. But what we can do is we can put every effort forward to direct it towards creating a more prosperous world for everyone. We can leverage AI in order to guide us towards systems that stop over-harvesting the world's resources. We can use AI in order to start exploring the universe in ways that we have never been able to before. But one thing is of primary concern as we continue to develop the world towards the future is that we are empowering ourselves as a society to spread prosperity and happiness. We are getting into some pretty deep metaphysical issues here. Theology is combining with philosophy with the advent or invention of AI. We have the world's leading experts not even sure if we're living in a simulation versus the real world. We are the creators of our own futures and fates. The next generations to come will not forgive us if we don't do everything we can to create a better world tomorrow than we are living in today. It is our duty as the current constructors, builders of the future, to make a world that spreads love, joy, and happiness. We can do this if we come together, but we have to establish core principles that a goal of ours is to spread prosperity and to ensure biodiversity and to make sure that we stop over-harvesting the world's resources and instead focus on spreading happiness. It really is a choice. We are creating this technology. The whole purpose of technology is to make a better world for us to live in. You and I can come together and we can establish a new world order based on technology that makes the world a better place. We just need to be careful that we don't put the wrong people in charge that disregard humanity and other organisms as we build this new future. Please like and subscribe and share this video. We need to make a movement to make the world a better place. I hope you have a great day.